Good day, grade 8. So today, we will be dealing with taxonomy. I am your science teacher. I am teacher Monica. The following objectives are, number one, you will be able to define species, describe each hierarchical taxonomic system, explain how, orga how organisms are named and classified. So I have a question here. If you are familiar with this fruit, if yes, then when you are in Bicol, you will call this the Tiles. But when you're in Manila, you will call this Aratiles. And of course, when we are in Ilocos, we call this Manzanitas. See, one fruit having different common name. But the scientific name of this fruit is Muntingia calabura. And Muntingia calabura, commonly known as Aratiles, and has other local names such as Datiles and Manzanitas or Cereza. Hmm, that's a bit confusing, right? This is also true with our Philippine monkey eating eagle. The scientific name is Pitecophaga jeffreyi. Look at how the scientific name is written. Biologists follow universally accepted principles to provide scientific names to known organisms. But why don't scientists use common names? Using this video clip, you will learn why. Welcome to Moomoo Math and Science. In this video, I'd like to talk about a scientific name, also called binomial nomenclature. If you were to name these animals, you could use the word cat, dog, or frog. If you lived in Germany, you would use cat, hun, and frush. In order to avoid confusion, animals are identified and plants with a scientific name. This system is called binomial nomenclature. These names are important because they allow people throughout the world to communicate about animals. Scientists use international rules to name animals. These naming rules mean that every scientific name is unique. Scientific names are also designed to tell you something about the animal's relationship with other animals. Scientific names may also be descriptive about the animal. Let's dissect a scientific name. A house cat is the scientific name is Felis domesticus. The first part describes the genus that a cat belongs to, Felis. It is always capitalized. All species that are thought to be most closely related are placed together in a genus, for example like these cats. The second part of the scientific name, domesticus, is always lower, lower case and it describes the species that is unique to the organisms. Let's look at another example, a dog, Canis lupus familiaris. The genus is Canis and the species is lupus familiaris. How about the frog? There are over 5,000 types of frogs. So the scientific name tells you exactly which one you are talking about. The Reina temporaria. The genus is Reina, and temporaria is the species. There you go, a scientific name. Two parts describes the genus and the species. Thanks for watching the Moo Moo Math uploads a new math. Look. Okay, so going back to our question earlier, why don't scientists use common names? Common names can be confusing to scientists because the same organism may have different common names. For example, the puma, the cougar, the panther, the mountain lion, they are all the same animals. They are called puma con color. So different species may share a single common name. So how are organisms' scientific names determined? According to Carolus Linnaeus, he devised the binomial nomenclature in the year 1758. 
there are two parts of the naming system. And take note, it is written in italics. The first word is capitalized and the second word is lowercase. The first word tells us the genus and the second word tells us the species. For example, grizzly bear, the scientific name is Ursus arctus. He also developed the taxonomical hierarchy. Before going to the taxonomical hierarchy, I want you to answer this question. How do you usually organize your drawer? From that to this. Yes, we need to classify. So classifying or classification is putting things into groups based on how they are the same. For example, all shoes in one place, all socks, all shirts. And in taxonomy, taxonomy is the study of identifying, classifying, and naming living things. So why do we classify? To recognize similarities between living things, their DNA, biomolecules, or cells, and to group organisms according to their similarities. For example, the taxonomy of living things, the domain, the kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species, these are the levels of classification. For the domain, for human being, it is belong to Eukarya, Kingdom Animalia, Phylum Chordata, Class Mammalia, Order Primates, Family Hominidae, Genus Homo, and Species Sapiens. So the scientific name of human being is Homo Sapiens. Homo from its genus, Sapiens from the species. Using this video clip, this is actually a song, you will learn about taxonomic hierarchy. And the Mars and the Mars and the Mars treats the parent. Sashay Thai habitat and their type of babies. So we spend the years, one or two, we'll get past the band bank. So we made a system, we call a taxonomy. So every living thing is sorted, sorted in seven major levels. Seven, seven, and at the top, starting by specific at the bottom. You don't mean that is right, it stops with the kingdom. Since we 
So according to the Deline the Linnaean system, having the levels of classification with a pneumonia, King Philip came over for good soup. According to Carolus Linnaeus, K stands for the kingdom, phylum P, class C, O order, F family, G genus, S species. But for the modern system of classification, it includes the domain. And the domain is the highest rank of organisms. Linnaeus did not invent the taxonomic ranks, but he did not invent the domain rank, which is relatively new. The three domains of life are bacteria, archaea, and eukaryota.